Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya. Hello, everyone. So last time we discussed the twelve links of dependent origination, and we talk about the cause of samsara, how reincarnation was caused by our mind, stemmed from a thought of ignorance. And one may ask, if we are perfect like the Buddhas, when do we generate this thought of ignorance? And when we become enlightened, will we again give rise to ignorance? So all these questions. So today let's discuss it. The Buddha actually dealt with these questions in the Sutra of Perfect Enlightenment. And I'll quote directly from the Sutra. Well, honored one, if all sentient beings are originally perfect Buddhas, then how can they also possess ignorance? If sentient beings are originally ignorant, how can you say that they have always been perfect Buddhas? If all the worldlings in the ten directions are originally perfectly enlightened, but later give rise to ignorance, at what point do all these Tathagatas regenerate these afflictions? My only request is that you not discard your limitless, great compassion and that you reveal the concealed treasure to the Bodhisattvas and sentient beings of the degenerate age. This will cause Bodhisattvas to gain unshakable faith and allow all sentient beings of the degenerate age to gain access to this teaching, which is a sutra instruction of the complete doctrine, such that they can permanently sever doubt and regret. Having said this, he prostrated himself to the ground. He asked this question three times in succession. Then the world on the one speaking to the Bodhisattva Vajagaba said, Excellent, excellent, good son, you have asked well for the Bodhisattvas and sentient beings of the degenerate age about the Tathagata's extremely deep and reconduct final expedient means. This is the highest teaching given by the Bodhisattvas the fully revealed doctrine of the great vehicle, which is able to cause the enlightening bodhisattvas of the ten directions, as well as the sentient beings of the degenerate age, to gain unshakable faith and permanently sever doubt and regret. Now listen well, and I shall explain this for you. Vajragaba Bodhisattva received this instruction with reverence and great joy, and those in the great assembly became silent and listened. Good sons, all worlds begin and end, are born and die, have prior and after, exist and do not exist, gather and scatter, arise and cease. This circular motion of going and returning without a moment's lapse, variously being grasped and released, is all cyclic existence. The nature of a perfect enlightenment that's discerned without having left cyclic existence is simply transmigratory. If you think you can escape cyclic existence in this way, you are completely off the mark. It is comparable to the way in which shaking the eyes can make still water appear to move, or the way that a transfixed gaze can enable the appearance of a fire wheel. In the same way, clouds flying past the moon make it seem to move, and when you are in a moving boat, the shore appears to move. Good sons, all these things are in motion without cease, and even though the objects are already stationary, you can't get a fix on them. How can you possibly expect to get a glimpse of the Buddha's perfect enlightenment with the cyclical, sansaric, stained mind which has never been clear? Because of this, you are prone to give rise to these three mental disturbances. So what the Buddha is saying now, if we try to understand the perfect enlightened Buddha nature with our current cyclic, sansaric, delusional mind, we will not be able to obtain the right answer. So this is actually not the right question to ask because you will not get the right answer anyway. And the Buddha further illustrates this with a metaphor. Good sons, it's like an illusory eye disease falsely engendering a vision of sky flowers. You can't say, when will the sky re-arise sky flowers? Why, since the sky originally has no flowers, they do not arise and cease. Sansara and Nirvana are the same as arising and ceasing. 
Marvelous enlightenment illuminates perfectly, and is free from flowers or eye disease. So, because this sort of ignorance is fundamentally unreal, a samsara is unreal. It's an illusion. So it's like the metaphor the Buddha talk about here, as if someone with thick eyes that engendered a vision of the sky flowers in the sky. And then this person is asking, "Oh, when did the sky flower appear?" But someone with the perfect eyes would tell you there is actually no sky flower in the first place. You see the sky flowers because of your sickness, your eye sickness. And another metaphor the Buddha talk about in the Surigama Sutra is that、uh, someone stares at the moon for too long, and then he suddenly sees a second moon. And he asked someone, "Oh, when did this second moon happen?" But there was actually no second moon in the first place. Okay, this thought of ignorance—it's unreal. Sansara—it's unreal. We are currently in a dream, and I'm talking to you in a dream. You are listening to me in a dream,、uh, because we are so much attached to what's happening in the dream, and we think it is real. When we were dreaming in a dream, we think, "Oh, everything was so real." But when you wake up, you realize, "Ah, it was just a dream," and you wouldn't even bother to think about, "Oh, when did I last night give rise to this dream?" Right? You would just move on with your life. So, we are currently all in a dream, but because we're so much attached to this dream, so we think it is real, and that's why we're being trapped in the cycle of reincarnation. Regarding to the question of when one realizes Buddhahood, will one again give rise to the thought of ignorance? The Buddha used the metaphor of smelting gold ore. Good sons, it's like smelting gold ore. The gold does not come into being because of smelting; it's already perfect gold, and after refinement, will never again become ore, even though it passes through endless time. The nature of the gold is never corrupted. It's wrong to say that it's not originally perfect. The perfect enlightenment of the Tathagata is also like this. Good sons, the marvelous, perfectly enlightened mind of the Tathagata originally has neither body nor nirvana. It has neither accomplishment of Buddhahood nor non-accomplishment of Buddhahood, no false cyclic existence, and no non-cyclic existence. Good sons, in the perfect state of the sound hearers, shavakas, there is complete detachment to the body, mind, speech. Yet they are still incapable of attaining their own actualized and manifest nirvana. How can you possibly expect to force on the tathagata state of perfect enlightenment using discursive thought? It's like trying to burn Mount Sumeru with the fire from a firefly. It's impossible. So the perfect enlightened mind of the Buddha is actually inconceivable. It cannot be described by mere words. By all these words we use, samsara, nirvana, bodhi, enlightenment. By all the words, all talks are simply ways of convenience. By in the perfect enlightened mind of the Buddha, by all these concepts, duality, whatever, all dissolves. By all talks. Are simply ways of convenience. So also in Buddhism, do not be attached to mere words, to mere concepts. So even arahants, like the shavakas, who listen to the Buddha expounding the Four Noble Truths and try to realize arahants. So even arahants do not understand the perfect enlightened nature of the Buddha.、Uh, what says about us, ordering beings? So why the arahants? Because they Cut off the attachment in the samsara, but they still have separation, and they still have other subtle afflictions they haven't cut off. So even a bodhisattva cannot really understand the perfect enlightened nature of the Buddha. I only at the level of the Buddha, I one understands the Buddha. Using the cyclic mind, you produce cyclic views. And you will never be able to enter the Tathagata's ocean of perfect tranquility. Therefore, I say that all bodhisattvas and sentient beings of the degenerate age should first sever the beginningless root of cyclic existence. 
Good sense, habituated discursive thought arises from the conditioned mind. The six dusts, delusions, and conditioned energies are not the true essence of mind. Indeed, they are like sky flowers. But using discursive thought to discern the Buddha state is like the sky flowers better producing sky fruits. Circular false thoughts are useless here. Good sons, false floating thoughts, and numerous clever views are incapable of perfecting the expedient means of perfect enlightenment. Using this kind of discrimination to ask the question, this is not the right question. Then the world on the one. Desiring to restate the gist of this, spoke a verse saying, "Vajragaba, you should know the Satagata's perfect tranquil nature has never had a beginning or end. If you use the cyclic mind, discursive thought just revolves, at most reaching the limits of cyclic existence, and you are unable to enter the Buddha Sea. It's like smelting gold ore. The gold does not exist because of smelting." Yet crude gold, from smelting, once subsequently perfected, never returns to the state of all. Sansara and Nirvana, whirlings and Buddhas, like sky flowers, are appearances. Discursive thought is just an illusory phenomena. What to say about all other delusions? If you can cut off this delusional mind, then you can seek perfect enlightenment. So I think the Buddha answered these questions really clearly. So with the cyclic mind, you only generate cyclic views. If you try to analyze thoughts generated from the delusional mind, then you only generated more delusions. So this is actually not the right question to ask.、Uh, to ask, well, when did we give rise to the thought of ignorance? It's like the parable of the poisoned arrow. A person was shot with an arrow that was heavily smeared with poison. And the doctor tried to come and rescue him, and he was like, "Wait, I won't have this arrow taken out until I know, you know, when did this happen? Who shot me? What was his name? His family, etc." And he would die of it before he could actually know all these answers. So, the first thing for us to do is to cut off the delusional mind to attain enlightenment. And we'll be able to wake up from the ground dream of samsara. And what's the easiest way to do that? The easiest is to first recite the name of Amitabha Buddha and to attain rebirth in Amitabha Buddha's pure land. This is the easiest path for all beings in the Dharma ending age, as it does not require us to first realize enlightenment here, but. We will be able to realize enlightenment to the stage of non-regression, a high level of enlightenment, when we attain rebirth in Amitabha Buddha's pure land. It's extremely difficult for us to rely on our self-effort and realize enlightenment here. It's much easier for us to first attain rebirth in Amitabha Buddha's pure land and realize enlightenment there. This is indeed real. The Buddha talked about it. In many sutras, which we'll discuss more in the near future. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabha.